Hello, everyone. Today on the podcast, we got my good friend and roommate, Mikey Cicerelli. Let's get to it. Cool. Are you recording? Mm-hmm. Oh, perfect. Yeah, we're good to go. Easy. Yeah. Nice. Well, I guess we can start off with a question. Um, first question. Here first we go. First question. You want to start off with the season? Season, yeah. yeah I'll do a season point. review. Yeah. I mean, season was l- shorter than usual because of... Yeah. COVID, obviously, but on a grand look of it, it was pretty awesome. I got to compete in some really cool contests, kind of dealt with some weather at X Games and due to our like, super slow conditions that yeah. affected me a bit. I kind of wish, looking back, that we had good speed because then I could have done better runs, but yeah, can't really think like that. Kind of have to take those days as they come. Yeah. And then, yeah, I got to film a little bit for the Burton One World Project, which was really cool for me because it's a new experience getting to go I went to Blue River with Mikkel, uh, Mikey Rance and Mark Schollers and yeah. definitely was a little intimidated because those dudes are really good at what they do yeah. you know like going on a sled trip now you got to deal with sledding getting to the spot finding spots is another thing like having your eye to like find and those boys really helped me out just being like kind of point stuff out that I'd look at but then they'd be like no you should probably ride it from this side, it actually ride a lot better. Yeah, because it's one thing getting out there, but then it's actually like finding the right spot and building in the right area, getting the right speed. There's so many yeah factors. variables and factors that like you need to take into account. Which is those dudes have been doing it for so long; they know it so well. It's so cool to see. So did you kind of like really build off of what they were saying and kind of pull from them a lot then? Yeah, mainly I was just like basically told them because that the first day like I was just like literally. Just tell me anything. Like I'm not gonna like be bummed if you're like that's wrong. This is wrong. Like I'm literally just here to absorb anything you guys tell me. So just yeah. like I'm just like want to know exactly what you guys are doing. Yeah. Like basically just learning. Yeah. Like totally. same thing you'd be at like an avalanche course or like something like that. You're just I was just trying to take as much info as I could so that yeah I could bring it back into my own yeah like snowboarding or my own like process. Must have been a shift though. Like usually when you go like you're in the park, it's not so much a team effort and you're not. Like, I mean, you take, you know, points from the homies on certain tricks and stuff, but you're not yeah. pulling on, like, how to ride the feature and as much. Maybe yeah, and I think a lot of it, too, is, like, deciding on where to go that day. And, like, I've only done such small of it, but, like, it's you have to have a good crew that all kind of has, I feel like, like-mindedness because you can, I feel like if you had someone that wants to hit, like, certain features, you could have, like, a little bit of, like, a void or, like, more, like kind of, like, attention because people would be like, no, we're going here today. No, we're going yeah. here. You kind of have to have, like, a common, okay, we're building this, then we'll go hit this because because then you'll just you won't get shit done if you're like going everywhere yeah trying to find you got to like settle i feel like and be like this is our spot for now then you can have your big step down or you can have your big (laughs) cheese wedge you know like you have to like you need that dynamic to work out well it's it's really interesting and that trip was funny because i went straight from i was super bummed because i was riding us open really well yeah i really liked the course and like i had done a really good run in practice like switch back nine alley you back 12 alley up out of the quarter and then like cab 12 and that would have been like more than enough to make finals and then yeah so i was super choked to not make finals there like so yeah. bummed and then i got the opportunity my team manager was like do you want to go blue river tomorrow yeah so like scrambled home we were at like a party and i was just like okay well i gotta get everything sorted booked my flight shuttle that morning left at like 7 a.m the next day was already wow. driving and i was just like okay full change of like 180 from the contest to the go into film what was the turnaround? Do you think, like, from when you rode Slope Qualies to when you're in Blue River? Was it, like, 48 hours or 72 hours? Uh, I think it was probably, like, 36 hours because I left maybe 40. Yeah, it would have yeah. been 48 hours on the dot because we rode Wednesday was qualifiers, traveled Thursday, Friday. We were riding Friday and Saturday, so, yeah, 48 hours. Yeah, so no planning. You're just in it and then, no. you're like, okay, and I, full switch. Yeah, I was, like... <laughs> my truck's gonna make it yeah like all sorts of variables but before it held out it was pretty awesome no planning at all yeah it was sick did that kind of set the tone for the rest of it too because i know after that you got to do some more yeah and then so then i came back to whistler and i got like red and brock hit me up or like you should come out with us because danny was supposed to come down to whistler so they were um like had one person that they needed to fill yeah a spot so i was like oh yeah and then it was cool with those boys because they wanted to build jumps and yeah. hit big features, so that we got some, got two really good days that were really awesome. Like some of the coolest days I've had in like the Whistler backcountry for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's super sick. Definitely opened my eye up to a lot of things where you're like, holy crap! Of like, 
it's big. Shit is big out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was that dynamic different riding with like Red and Brock versus riding with Mikel and, and Yeah, they just have to, like Red is so good on his board. Yeah. Like so consistent and so good at spinning and landing and stuff and then like yeah, yeah brock's got a good like when he's motivated he just wants to like get shit done which is sick and like yeah. those boys were like that but they just had different eyes and features like that i think they're at a point where they want to build more natural stuff and more like find it within the slope rather than like yeah build those big cheese wedges kind which, of read the mountain yeah area. which is it was cool to have both trips because i got to see like yeah how those guys do it and then how like Red and Brock has read and filmed for Joy and they've yeah. hit a lot of big jumps so he has some yeah. like, some good experience same with Brock so it was cool to see both views of how to shred out there it was cool yeah yeah. jumping out there is a different beast eh? yeah it's just hard to land yeah and you, I mean it's just I feel like when you ride slope style or like when you ride jumps in the park you can use your edges like say you over rotate yeah. a front seven you can kind of like oh I'm just going to put my heels in yeah. or like uh, like a back nine you're like oh i'm just gonna like turn out of it but in the pow you have to land you have to just do your tricks perfectly yeah like within the from, takeoff too as well yeah from the takeoff to the landing like yeah taking off straight landing straight because if you you can't really you can't do like a shit hook out of the no you you're just gone. you just ragged off <laughs> yeah. you just get worked yeah so it's, i think yeah it's a lot of like landing perfectly straight which is like because i feel like for us like a lot of time you do like a back 12 or you know yeah. a cab 10 or whatever is front 10 you're like we dig our toes in you want to like on, that's, a, that's on, a, good on a park jump yeah. so you, you have to get away from that and learn how to like make the trip come to your flat base yeah which is way different than yeah it's a cool cool transition and man after hitting some of the stuff like fucking rents and solars the jumps they've hit and whistler and tricks they've done i was like holy crap <laughs> yeah these dudes are fucking legends it's insane yeah like, yeah yeah, made me really one. like appreciate it. i was like wow because it's like they're not like yeah like we hit perfect jump and i thought it was going to be like super f fun it yeah. was fun but it was scary yeah yeah way more fear than yeah like it was like i was like this thing sitting up top i was like wow this jump is no joke like it rode great yeah like it shapes up perfect like they but it's it, just like you're going real fast yeah and it hurts to ragdoll. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not like a casual, like, yeah. oh, I just fell in the pouch. Like, yeah, Holy it's like, shit. yeah, you got to be on it. Yeah. And like, yeah, like rents, front double tend it. Like, yeah, that seems insane. Dude, it was so sick. Yeah. Yeah. I was it, really impressed. Yeah. A jump like that, too, it's not, like, it's more long than it is poppy. Hey? Like, you don't. Yeah, it's but, more like shootout. Yeah. Yeah. But it reminded me almost like a, like how steep the run is. It's almost like a scaffolding jump. Like, you're like, <laughs> going in and then like hit the g's and then like yeah i was yeah you all the tricks that I'd gone like i yeah like what was it um was people doing cab nines on it like 20 years ago yeah like chris deficy yeah it was like holy crap it's crazy how the backcountry stuff has held all these years like you could show apart from 20 years ago and there's definitely a bunch of tricks in it they're like well if someone did that today it'd still be, be super legit well because yeah. i think it's the process of everything's like the snow has to be good that day. It has to line up. It has to fill in right. Yeah. You have to get the right light of it. Like it's it's still a feat to get those shots today. Or yeah. they, even well, when ago. they did it twenty years ago, they're on yeah, shittier sleds, sleds and yeah. I don't know. It's it's really interesting. Yeah. 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 It just seems like you have to put so much together, like everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot different than like contest riding, in the sense like. When I go to a contest, I kind of have an idea of what tricks I want to do, and yeah. I have my runs that I've like thought about in my head yeah. throughout the year, my tricks that are working, and all that stuff. But then I feel like when you come to a jump in the backcountry, you can be like, "Okay, that trick's gone, that trick's gone, that trick's gone," and then you kind of revert to like you have to revert to like stuff that you're just really confident at, yeah. and then to really like that's why it's crazy like Sage doing that front twelve or like big cab twelves, like yeah. That okay. shit's even like it doesn't. You don't get a nice setup turn. You don't like it's. It's crazy that. Yeah. It's so impressive. That and the back, back twelve was yeah. insane. <laughs> like if you watch it, like the that run is not very wide. Like you can't do that big nice S turn no. into it. You got to be like, whoosh, like. And his landing, it's not like you can just put it down, and cruise out. Like he's doing a high speed switch it's, ride out. It's yeah. Through Chunder. It's another beast for sure. I'm excited for the future of that. You're getting more comfortable. Yeah and hitting bigger stuff and just like 
getting bigger tricks like it'd be cool they'll be bring some of the tricks I do in slope contests out there yeah on the right jumps you could definitely do it do you think contest riding helps because you have to be so consistent with your tricks and like you work towards that throughout all the yeah. then when you go to the backcountry I think it for sure ho- trick as much? helps just because you have the more reps on your tricks yeah that you like you know like you do a back seven and it's like you've done back seven for you do it your warm up trick you know first lap of the day so you're yeah. like you, you know, know you got that one or like that kind of thing so I feel like yeah definitely just your reps help a lot yeah yeah do you consider that going into a contest like the level of consistency you'd have with certain tricks oh yeah like yeah. that's my whole basis that's why it's hard for me when I'm in a contest and I'm not I'm doing a trick that I'm not very confident I'm trying to like basically in my mind I'm just going back to the moments that I've landed it yeah so I'm like okay I've landed it here I've landed it here and I'm just building off that to land it right there that's a cool way to do it just because like I'm like because sometimes some days in a contest you the weather sucks or practice doesn't go well so yeah. you actually didn't get to go try your biggest trick yeah but all you have to rely on is your memory and like your like mental being like okay i've done this trick before i can go do it again i just gotta go do it on a different jump yeah and you're kind of like i'm just like trying to like remember moments that i've done it before so that i can like bring it to the kind of like play it in your mind like you've done it all that yeah. morning and then go yeah and do it. and go and do it yeah yeah it's it's really it's that's the I think the hardest thing about competing is that you don't sometimes you don't get a chance to like practice doesn't always go well no it and you got to be able to like turn it on and like sometimes you get you just got smoked or like <laughs> yeah like due to her this year uh, practice I was doing this like switch front blunt two to cab two I don't know if you noticed in my run I pulled it back to just switch board slide on the up rail to cab two pull oh yeah, yeah but yeah. in practice I was doing switch front blunt two to cab two pull. Oh. And one of my, f- I think, third run, it was like an eight-foot drop off the platform, off the up rail. Yeah. Hooked on a switch front blunt and just went off the platform and, like, jarred my knee so bad, like, limping. I was, like, had to take some Advil. Like, I was, like, fuck, my knee is so sore. So I had to t- sit out for, like, yeah. a couple runs because my I didn't know if my knee was going to be all good. And then I go, okay, now I'm going to change that because I don't feel like that. And then the jumps were super slow. Yeah. Like, I had done, I think, in that contest, for example, I did cab 9, front 10, back 12. Yeah. And I all I did in practice was, a like, a cab 5, front 3, back 5 or something like that. Yeah. But not even. Like, yeah. Like, because I was trying to go, originally I wanted to go front side, back side cab, and that was way too slow. It just wasn't working. Yeah. So it's just interesting to, like, you have to, like, really adapt. And that's why it's, like, watching Mark at those contests is really impressive because he can just, like, he's, like has those big tricks yeah, locked like so no o- no other you know like you can just turn it on and be like boom front triple yeah and like you're like the trick is crazy in a situation like that would he build up by just like you said like you don't have the speed to do the front triple that many times you're just doing front threes yeah, yeah like a lot of time like yeah you like something I do too is you can do a cab five or you can do a back five or whatever it is or front even seven and be visualizing a yeah. bigger trick while you're doing it yeah like because it's like such for us it's like second nature to go to a front seven yeah but while you're doing it, you're thinking okay on the lip what's going to feel like for me to throw a front 14 or whatever it might be because yeah. you're like okay and then in the air you can get your visual cues of that's what the knuckle looks like this is what the landing looks like this is where i want my head to be yeah it's pretty crazy if you think about it it's like how much info you're trying to take in everything you're like, almost like building a picture of the jump and just trying to figure out the jump and then doing yeah. the trick is like you're just adding that to the equation. Yeah, you're you? just putting on top of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really, it's a cool way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah, just talking about it now, it's fucking, it's dope. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. crazy what it takes to put in a contest run. Yeah, yeah. I think rails are like another, because like I'm always, for me, I want my rail lines to be pretty techy and, yeah. you know, like good 270s and pullbacks and like, and it's like if you roll through a course or like a say you just roll through a park yeah. and try to lace like the big rails every time yeah it's not you sometimes you don't like if i rolled through whistler if it was open and like okay i was gonna hit that down flat down and try to slide through the whole thing and then i'm gonna gap pull back on that rail yeah it's like you got to be on it for rail riding which is i agree it's really like x games course was pretty techy like yeah. that first rail trick i was doing the switch tail change up front board too yeah i wouldn't get that at every time no but then in my runs i got it every time which i was yeah. super stoked on but i like it would be like hit or miss i'd go over the rail too much or like this and then like yeah in your contest you're just like okay just go here 
take off here you have like your moment your point where you're like okay, i'm gonna hit here i'm gonna look for that point of the rail i'm gonna land there yeah you have like your cues so you can like there's just so much going on in rail riding and there's yeah. so many like if you're just off a bit you don't make the end of the rail yeah. so the 270 doesn't go mm-hmm. like yeah but that x games course was hard because it was four jumps back yeah. to back like first day we rolled through them we were like whoa these are just like bmx jumps like that's how close they felt like the spacing in between them. yeah like you'd land and you'd be on the takeoff wow yeah like it was, it was crazy so you have no time to like for one you can't afford any bobbles mm-hmm. i guess and then just even yeah. like your setup turns with tricks like yeah even for landing sure one side and ending up mm-hmm. the other side and stuff. like speed wise too like you had to be yeah so tight super tight will yeah. you go into a course like that with like a predetermined run or is it you get there and you just gotta like um yeah at x games i wanted to spin like i wanted to go switch back but on the first jump but the speed was so slow so yeah. i had to adapt and was like trying to like manipulate a new run that i could do yeah. and i feel like that's a lot of things you have i don't think you want to go in because we always get the like before the contest we get the renders you log in and you have like oh, yeah. they have all the rails and the jumps that's so it. you can like yeah theoretically you could have like a run completely planned out but yeah. once you get there every feature is going to ride a lot different than what it looks like yeah like no, nothing like you sure you can look at a photo of a rail setup with all these like transfer rails or gaps and be like i'm gonna hit this one but then you get there and you're like oh, actually, i actually don't really like the way that rides the takeoff's yeah. not right or yeah yeah you never know until you're mm-hmm. there so you're kind of just always adapting really like yeah riding the course and then they do you know like they'll do course feedback where we're like, hey, let's put more pop on this jump or this rail. And then that changes a lot too because you're like, oh no, that rail works better. That jump's better now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like it's, the, the course isn't as it is when you first show up to when you actually ride it in college. Yeah. Well, like Dutour, for example, yeah. where the up rail was, I don't, like yeah, up yeah. rail, that was supposed to be a quarter pipe jump. So the first day we yeah. showed up, it was a quarter pipe jump, but they only had a 13 foot cutter and it was like pretty much oververt. So you couldn't even... And it was on the flat section, so it's like there's no way to get speed for yeah. it. We basically were like, okay, put it up, like plow Strap that. Scrap it, yeah. yeah. So then, like, all of us going there, we're expecting to go. Yeah, have QP jump. QP jump, yeah. then three jumps. Yeah. And then that got scrapped on the first day of practice. So then you're like, all right, now. Yeah, you're rebuilding your Kind of made it a little bit easier because then you don't have to, like. Because it was pretty much like a flat section that you had to. Tuck. tuck as hard as you could. Yeah, it was good they had the upper rail to keep the speed up. Yeah, if they didn't have so it, it wouldn't cool. have worked. But that's, yeah, that's the whole, I think, yeah. constantly contest ride. Adapting to and, like, adapting to other people's riding. Like, you, if you're, like, trying to, like, make a finals and you're trying to, like, change your run and be like, okay, hey, this person's doing this run, and then your coaches are riding, watching this guy do his tricks and, like, yeah. You, sometimes you're like, all right, I'm just going to go do a nine because I know people are falling. Or like, no, you need to go 14 right now because everybody's landing. Yeah. And you're just like constantly watching the... And kind of playing up with the landing yeah. speed. That's a, like, for me, like in big air, I always struggle with that because I'm always like, oh, I'll just do like a, a 12 to like land. Yeah. And then everyone lands like their back triple. And I'm like, oh shit, I got to like go 14 or front, you know, like... It really turns on. It turns on, like, yeah. So it's yeah. like a change of, you kind of have to go... I think now it's, it's better to just go all in because everyone's so good. Yeah. Everyone usually lands. Yeah. In a situation like a bigger two where yeah. it's, it's really like... One jump. Yeah. Kind of nice thing about slope style is you just can put so much more variety into things. Yeah, I definitely like slope style riding a lot more just in the sense that you can, I don't know, show, show more of your own riding style. Yeah. Like everybody, like in big air, it's just one jump. It's hard to like... Yeah. Especially now, you're just trying to spin as much as you can. Yeah. <laughs> or flip as much as you can. Yeah. So, in slope style, you can at least have, like, a little more style. Yeah. Like slope style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you can, yeah, you can have your own approach and, like, the way you do. I don't know. I just think in rail riding, too, you, you can show more style in, in certain ways. Just yeah. with, like, arms. I'm always, like, yeah, so really conscious, of, conscious of arms like Danimals I love he's probably my favorite rail ride style because his arms never go above his head which is really hard if you think about riding rails yeah to keep your arms above your or below your waist is like yeah. really challenging and get those tech tricks done and too. be doing like 270s in or pretzels out yeah not arching your back yeah yeah like it's I really <laughs> love people that can do those tricks but make them look so easy yeah yeah without like yeah the arch back not too big of a fan of that one. No. No. But it, I mean, if you're going to go do like a front blunt 450 pretzel out, 
you have to arch your back. Yeah, there's just no <laughs> There's way no way. Either. And it's a sick trick. I'm still going to be like, that's awesome. That's yeah. dope. But I wouldn't go do that myself. No, because yeah. of the styles that you like. Yeah. That's Nico's line, though, like doing the hardest part at the most difficult time and just making it look easy. Like those yeah. really, those crooks points, like especially yeah. like on any pull or something when you want to just like kick yeah. your toes in and get all crazy and put yeah, your arms up. Like, just like, yeah, yeah, throw your arm. Because it does make it easier when you go like, oh, I'm just going to oh, hula hoop this one around. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that one. And But yeah, no, I, that's why some of those street guys are just super steezy. Even yeah. like Luif is really oh, good at that. Yeah, he's really Super good at calm that. arms and stuff. And yeah. All that two prets too he did he was like super chill yeah arms stayed like totally yeah. within it I, I, I backed that so hard do you think that comes from like guys you rode with growing up or just like a personal style of like what you like when you watch yeah um, I think growing up with like cause like my coach his favorite snowboarder and then became my favorite snowboarder like J.P. Solenberg oh really so we Sick. just watch his video parts all the time and he's got like such good style and then yeah. I always look up to Mikkel yeah. Bang, and he has like super sick like, he pokes. Like, when he pokes, he puts his arms above his head, which I think is fine. Like, yeah. Because you're, like, poking your trick. Well, it's deliberate. It's deliberate, yeah. yeah. And yeah. But, like, even his one U.S. Open line, when he does, like, I think he does, like, switch front board. Yeah, switch front board on the first box, and he's just, like, chilling. <laughs> and then on the last rail, it's, like, a huge can rail. He just does, like, front board to fakie and just, like, chills. And it's just, like, yeah, such a sick. He does, yeah, cab 10, switch back 12, front 10. Yeah. Which is still a sick line today. And I was, like, 2010. We watched US it the other day. Yeah. That's crazy. So cool. But yeah, I, I think yeah, I think it is just your environment you grow up in, like who you like even like I think Sam Marcotte, like my coach, yeah, helped me help like help my style because he was so conscious about arm steez too. So I was like Yeah. I don't know, it's it's really interesting. Kind of like, bred into you from the people you ride. Like up. and like looking back on how everybody rides now, it's just like it's really interesting because everybody has that person they looked to, looked up to, and you can. I know you don't want to copy style or like that kind of stuff, but I think yeah. you definitely take a lot of like I don't know stuff from other people's writing and then kind of make it your own, or like stuff you like about people's writing. Yeah. And then once you start doing your tricks, you're gonna have your own style on it because it's you. Yeah. You're no one. You not be. one body is the same body, so it's yeah. It's gonna be completely different. Yeah. But in your own way, and maybe you're trying to do that spac five nose like sebe or something like that because yeah. he's got such a sick one but it's gonna look like you're doing it and your style because you're doing it yeah i yeah. agree it's i don't know it's a weird debate like copying style and all that stuff yeah i agree with you though i don't think it's possible to fully copy someone's style no and i think especially as you're coming up it's good to be like i want to be like that kind i want to have this i want to do sure. this trick like them and eventually like that culmination of all the things yeah. you like plus your own mm -hmm. individual yeah like, just the way taking influences tricks. And then once you like do that a lot, then you're gonna own your trick and be like, no, now I'm doing it the way I do it. Yeah. Because you've done it so many times, like. Yeah. You know, like that back one that you, some kids doing, it's like if you do that every single day. You go riding, it's gonna become your own style because you're just do, you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, yeah. I mean, f fair enough. Like, it's hard to like do a different grab than like a tail grab or something. But it's like, yeah. I don't know. I think it's just influences that affect your style a lot yeah yeah well i think even like like say if you look at your cab spin yeah and you do that like switch mute like yeah. indie poke thing yeah like it probably came from someone else doing it but for now sure. when you do it like it's if i see that trick i'm like oh that's how mikey does that trick yeah yeah like, for know. sure and that and then in 10 years or five years from now some kid will be able to make to probably do it better you know yeah. or something like that be like he's oh i'm like whoa yeah he took that to another level or like you know yeah which is cool because I'm like, that's just the evolution of snowboarding. Yeah. And like, people are so good now. You even see it in skateboarding, like just kids that you have no idea that, like even like Dusty. Yeah. Is a perfect example. Come, came up two years ago, no one knew who he was. Totally. And then he's doing backside quads at the US Open, you know? Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Like snowboarding is, is growing in the sense that there's just more good snowboarders. Yeah. Not just like the few from like resort to resort or the pro, I feel like there's just a bigger pool of good snowboarders. Cause oh, it's, totally. Cause it's older, it's getting older. Yeah. As it grows and as it gets older, there's just, people are gonna get better. I mean, I see it at like the level of contests I ride too. Yeah. Like it used to be that there was like, okay, you got a couple that are probably buying for the top spot. Yeah. And then you've got like a large proportion of who's riding there. Mm -hmm. We're just there to ride and have fun and it's, yeah. and it's whatever. 
But now it's like there is 20 dudes. Mm -hmm. Like half the field can yeah, take the contest. For sure. And it's cool. It's way sicker now because like you get to ride with such a broader group of people mm -hmm. that are, are all so good. Or even riding like here in Whistler, like some people four or five years ago for at least us, like not a lot of people would be riding Black Park. Yeah. But now like, you know, Jaden's killing it and like Truth and all those, the young kids can now go, they'll go ride the big jumps and be doing like trying back tens and like yeah. Jaden's doing front 14s on like, you know, like, yeah. and like three, four years ago is now they're all going to be like that for the next, for their whole careers of snowboarding. They're going to be like, yeah, they're going to be in that zone, in that zone which is really cool. It's nice. I think I, I like it. Like just having more people in snowboarding. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it helps everybody helps industry helps ski yeah. resorts helps everything. Like the more people do it, the bigger it'll be. And the more, the longer we'll be able to do it. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Just more of a, a bigger crowd to promote it to. Yeah. Yeah. Do you take much thought into the industry side of snowboarding? For sure. I'm yeah. like, I think it's just like, even we do like, um, a lot of those round tables yeah. and it's really cool cause you're looking at products that the mass public's going to see. And yeah. it's hard to like, sometimes I try to take an eye of like switch from like more of a buyer's point because I don't buy gear Yeah. and I'm around people that get you know, pro forms or stuff like that. So it's yeah. hard to like switch into like the weekend warrior. Like what are they buying and what do they really want to wear? And cause it's different from us. It's different from like totally. the like local Whistler people or something like that, you know? Yeah. Like, so it's hard to like, then that's the sense that I, how I think about it is it's like, I'm just trying to always think about what would a general consumer want to buy over. Like, you know, like, cause it's, it's so different. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to like justify like what I like is so different from, some dude that just comes up rides for 10 days a year yeah and but he's gonna have a huge impact on the industry because he wants to buy that new board he yeah. wants to buy that new jacket every year yeah because he works a good job in vancouver or something like that you know and you have to be i feel like conscious of because those are the people that are helping us out a lot a lot yeah. of the time too so trying to put yourself in that person yes yeah. i don't it's like well it makes sense though like you know if i would want like the ideal board it would last like you know, two years, which would for me be like yeah. 200 days of riding. Yeah, exactly. But the price point on it would be crazy. No, like, yeah, be that's not it, so it's like, feasible for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's just, I think it's good. Like for me in, in snowboarding, I like, I want to be in it for as long as I can. And not only like pro snowboarding or whatever it is, like just, just in the industry if I'm working or I'm working for a brand. And I think it's good to like just try to think about different areas of it and how it works yeah in the grand scheme of things because it's just trying to understand every aspect yeah of what you're in kind of thing yeah and like yeah. how it makes money you know yeah. like how brands do well and stuff like that yeah because it's it's really interesting that's cool tony hawk said that in, this, in an interview before oh really yeah nice. like, <laughs> yeah <it's laughs> <something>. no yeah <laughs> no i just realized that you gotta adapt i feel like and change into like what the general public thinks about yeah you know like sometimes a flashy binding that I might not like, someone might really love. Yeah. So like me riding it could help sell that binding to someone. Yeah, someone could see Even it. though I might not like it that much, it'd be like, whoa, that binding's awesome. Yeah. He's riding it. I really like those colors. And then that helps. Instead of just riding the classic like black, black boot, <laughs> black binding, Yeah. you know, like. Yeah, totally. It, it could help catch someone's eye rather than, you know, just kind of selling to like, the people that don't buy. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> you, you, know, like, you know, it shows like it's, even yeah. like at like when I'm in X Games or like that new kit I was wearing. Oh yeah, the pink. Yeah, but like yeah. that's something is awesome because that's more of a price point. So I'm like, yeah, I'll wear it because like hopefully yeah. it'll help the brand and like, and then it turns out like I got really good feedback. At first I was like pink pants, I don't know about this, and then like so many people on my Instagram were like, dude, that kid is so sick. Like yeah. I love it. So it, like it resonated with like more people than just like the if normal like one color one tone kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So I feel like it definitely helps to like change that, your view. Yeah, it resonated with a lot of people. I think even boarders like yo. Yeah, and I was really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't know how people would react to like, but a lot of people were stoked on them. Yeah. Which is cool. The colors really show the intricacies of the products too. Like, yeah, like a black boot and a black binding is meant to blend together, so you don't see it exactly. But then you don't show the product yeah. off. And do you think it's sort of something you have to balance, like 
you know, because you're like snowboarder number one, mm-hmm. but then you have to handle like all the added factors of like the professional snowboarder kind of thing. Like, is it does it come together pretty easily, or is there like a push and pull sometimes? Uh, I think it comes for me. It comes pretty easily just because yeah. I'm so grateful for what I'm doing. I'm, I'm never like bummed on posting something or like having to like go do something for the brands that I yeah. ride for. Like. I'm just over the moon that I get to snowboard for a living and yeah. I'll really just keep doing that for as long as I possibly can and like that's so sick just try not to take it for granted because it's it's really special it's been a dream of mine since a little kid to be yeah you know even talking about it now I'm like wow I'm very freaking lucky yeah <laughs> just to be you know like talking about selling boards to people and stuff like that and like that's such a trip to me yeah I don't know it's really really yeah. cool yeah the influence eh? like of just yeah having people kind of look to see what you're writing and stuff like that yeah it's 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 really nuts man yeah i'm very very stoked for the future and what's to come i'm just yeah it'd be sweet yeah mm-hmm. are you nervous at all from an industry perspective about like what this time might do to certain brands yeah i mean for sure i think a lot of people are nervous for i mean just general public yeah you know about their jobs and what the economy is going to be doing it's kind yeah. of stressful i just really hope it clears up by the fall and we can be snowboarding next winter yeah because if we miss next winter then a lot of things will change for yeah sure. but yeah, if we can history. if we can have that winter like next winter i think it'll be because i mean you'll get that the fall hype where everyone's getting stoked to shred again yeah. buying stuff being like oh i'm so stoked to ride yeah the oh, the resorts are starting to get snow you know like you'll get that buzz that froth, yeah but if we don't get that then yeah i think it'll it'll hurt it'll hurt for sure yeah even like Olympic qualifying next year like if we don't travel and we don't get to do our contest then I don't really know what will happen they'll have, to, they'll have to change the Olympic qualifying and manipulate the whole yeah. schedule yeah so yeah we're kind of at least we got like majority of the season like other sports that like they coming into like their big yeah. surfing and skateboarding you know yeah they're missing the their main season where we pretty much pretty much finished the entire yeah we at season. least we got like we got the big three contests in yeah i mean don't get me wrong i'm super <laughs> bummed that yeah. we're not riding spring riding and like yeah. still going sledding and all that stuff because it's really so fun, fun but yeah we i think you got to look at it in the positive that we, at least we got what we got some of it yeah not just none of it so i'm hoping by fall it clears up and we can have a good winter next year yeah because i don't i don't see us going to australia I, I don't know if they'll open borders for international travel. Yeah, even Europe, like early fall. Yeah, like Sass Fay, I don't know if that'll go down. Yeah, yeah who knows? It's just tough to know. It, it, it is. I don't know enough to yeah. be like, Psh, yeah, this, this is... <laughs> I'm not very knowledgeable yeah. in that sense. It's kind of funny for us, I feel like, because snowboarding, you know, from an outside perspective is kind of silly, and even from like our perspective, like what yeah. we do is, is mm-hmm. kind of... You know, it's just sliding down wood yeah, on a mountain. But sure. at the same time, it means so much. That it means like, a, a lot. Yeah. yeah. So you kind of have to be like, know that you care and that's okay, but then also check yourself because like, but what we, you know, like just that we get to do it in the first place is really For sure. Sad. Yeah. You don't want to be like over <laughs> selfish because like even, yeah. I was thinking like, we're like, when, when it first started, we were still getting to do our little backyard setups or like yeah. go hike the mountain and like ride a bit. But that's because we live in a mountain town. Like you yeah. have to think about the people that are diehard snowboard fans or weekend warriors that live in cities yeah. that physically can't go to the mountains because they're not allowed. I feel like you have to be smart about it and just kind of like take this time as a bit of like a detox and reset and just yeah. like, you know, change your pace. Yeah. I'm doing high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a weird time. How's it going? It's going good. Yeah. yeah. I think I'll be done by hopefully end of May. Nice. I'll be a high, high school graduate. Yeah. Which is pretty interesting. That's dope. Yeah. Be a nice little weight off the shoulder. Yeah, I think my mom will be the most stoked. Yeah. I think that was her biggest, uh, she thought she didn't raise me good enough because I didn't go to finish <laughs> high, high school. school. I think for a lot, for at least my mom, her like, she's like, okay, if I get my, my three kids through high school, they get their diplomas, yeah. I'm a good mom. Like, I nailed it. Yeah. Obviously, she's really happy for what I'm doing, but I think that was just one thing she's always like, oh. Yeah. So, and my brother. So, I'm doing it for them and yeah. for myself. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. It took me an extra year. Yeah, it's yeah. not easy. No, it's not. Well, especially since, like, like how early did you kind of stop going to school? Um, like, just after grade 11 was pretty much my last, like, 
full-time school but high school i was done grade 10 like i stopped going to school in grade 10 in grade 10 but i then i switched to online yeah so yeah and then like i just figured i was like i really love snowboarding and that's all i want to do and yeah i figured investing all my time into it was good and like i, I probably wouldn't have done finished my high school until i was stopping competing or filming or whatever i was because but since this happened i just had time yeah where i was like because I feel like I always try to find something better to do if I, if I was in school. Totally. The mountains open, I'll just go ride all day or like yeah. we can go sledding because whatever. Yeah, but totally. now there's literally nothing to do. Yeah. So I can't avoid it. Well, it's smart use of time though. Like, mm -hmm. Especially I feel like when you're in that like really progressive stage of your snowboarding, you kind of want to have all your, yeah. you know, not to tell anyone to not finish their school, but you know, if you have something that's, that's building, mm -hmm. so you put your time in and then when you For have sure. time that you know, you can't progress anything else to the school, finish it up. Yeah, for sure. And I think the most, the hardest thing to get better at snowboarding is the time on snow. Yeah. And you have to take a lot of time to do that. Like, yeah. you know, like getting 150 days on a year on a snowboard is quite challenging. It takes a lot of money and traveling. Yeah. But that's like, I feel like how you get really good is just having time on your board. So yeah. The most time you can snowboard. So Even like, you know, if it's, a shitty weather day or like it's not a good day but you're still snowboarding you might have progressed a little bit that day yeah like every day we go snowboarding i i feel like there's one little thing you can take out of it be like okay that was a plus and I'm now i'm like i added it yeah you know added it to my like stockpile or whatever it is and then you can like build off of it but it's hard if you don't get those days consistent consistently it's hard to build i feel like yeah, you're dealing in compound interest. If you can just do 1% every yeah. day, but you have 150 yeah. days of the year, that's way better than going out a couple times and just yeah. being like, okay, today I'm gonna learn the hardest trick I can, yeah. or like, go full hand. Like even I have a friend, like Aiden, he moved here from Ontario, Yeah, was a decent snowboarder, but, and then he from the last five years, whenever I see him ride, I'm like blown away because he just puts, he literally would put 150 days in riding. Really? And he is so good on his board now, just from like ripping down the mountain and everything. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. Like just shows, just, not, he's not even like, it's not like he's going up every day being like, I need to get better at snowboarding. He's just snowboarding. Yeah. And getting way better. It's really cool. Yeah. I think that's almost something that shows through. Like when you watch a pro ride down a mountain, there's a noticeable sort of uh, je ne sais quoi about what they have. They can just get down. Yeah. Nice. And like, yeah. Just, just how they move their snowboard. Mm -hmm. And you think, that really comes down it's just an hours game to a certain extent of yeah like they just put the time in more than anyone else hours game and like yeah stoke game and all yeah that stuff. but yeah for sure it's just time yeah a lot of the time <laughs> yeah <laughs> crazy thing about time yeah that's funny yeah well this was awesome Liam. Yeah. yeah what do you think about your first podcast experience it's great yeah yeah i talked a lot well that's that um i hope you enjoyed the show I'm really thankful for Mikey to come and sit down with me today. Um, I think he's got a really great mind, and I hope today's show gave some insight into that. I um, wanted to leave you with a couple uh, podcasts that I listened to recently, um, something I did in the last show, trying it out. Uh, the first one being from The Tim Ferriss Show, number 411. Uh, this one featured Richard Turner. He is a blind magician, and his story is pretty crazy. The next one is from the Joe Rogan Experience, number 1446. Uh, it's with Burt Kreischer. Really funny. And then the last one, there's no episode in specific. Um, it's kind of the entire show. Uh, that one is called Naval. First season of his podcast, all kind of about business. I don't know anything about business, but I thought it was cool. Um, each episode is only two minutes in length, so you can kind of hit a couple, see if you like it. There is one final episode where it has everything in its entirety, sort of its full body of work. It's about three hours, so if you want something to, you know, really dive into, you can listen to that. That's it. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, and I'll uh, see you in the next one.